The Mad Men finale was a perfect ending to an imperfect but stunning show, one that pondered human shame and need. There are people who don't know what they want in life and people who help them find it. It could be a religious figure, a seaside cult, or an ad man on a road trip soaking up the confusion of a restless country. The show burrowed into the contradictions of America, how a country could be so great yet so unfulfilled. If you forgave the show's liberal hiss, it made sense. How can something so full feel so half empty? As Don Draper partakes in a group meditation at a retreat, he realizes that his journey of self was really unconscious work. He wasn't searching for the meaning of life at all, but just a new way to sell sugar water. The search for love became the way to sell Coke. I'd like to buy the world a home and furnish it with love. Grow apple trees and honeybees and snow white turtle doves. I'd like to teach the world to sing, sing with me. See, Mad Men exposed the commercialization of feeling that was the 1970s, which paved the way for the final triumph of identity over patriotism. For Mad Men, patriotism was part of a package deal. All the old bad stuff like racism and sexism in Vietnam was included. The problem is what replaced it was far worse, a fraudulent search for self that undermines any unity. That unity, that Coke commercial, promising one world in perfect harmony, that was a bigger lie than anything. Don Draper saw that lie first. It's been here ever since. So whether you think Mad Men was a good or a great thing, it was the real thing <laughs> and a sad thing. So, Julie, you and I are the only people here at this table that actually watch it's the probably show. probably who watch the show who watch that show. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, including our audience. <laughs> no, kidding. What did you make of the, sh the ending? Uh, loved it. I thought yeah. it was unbelievable. Um, I agree with everything you said. The only part of the ending that I didn't love was that um, Peggy Olsen, who was this feminist icon, this woman that broke barriers and um, realized she didn't really need a man to survive in life, ended up settling for some schmub down the down the hall because you're talking about Stan. I'm talking about Stan. <laughs> Stan, the guy who wasn't even a big character, who all of a sudden she was like, well, I guess I'm in my mid 30s. I better get married. Mm -hmm. So I'll settle for the schlub down the hall. See, I went, I saw, Stop pointing at me. <laughs> I'm talking about the schlub down the hall. But I thought bowling. it was a more romantic thing where she, she, they, they finally realized each other. That's, you know. You're such a romantic. romantic. You're Sorry. such a romantic. I am not. I was just trying to find something to say. Dana, you did watch parts of the show. Yeah, initially. But, but you found the use of alcohol to be off-putting. <laughs> I did. Yes. Oh, no. Okay. First, the, the first season didn't grab me. Okay. Yeah. I was like trying, like, why is why does everyone love this show? And I thought I thought it was maybe just because I was too busy that I couldn't understand it. Um, but the other the thing I really did find remarkable is that they drank all the time. Yeah. So three martini lunches was the norm, and I could never do that. Or and I don't know. I guess that must have been real. Yeah, it was real. People drink it, like that. Everybody. At the I, there are people that still have bars in their office, and their names don't rhyme with Geraldo. Okay. <laughs> go to, go to, oh my God. Go to Del Frisco's down the, down the street. At lunch. Well, I couldn't. Lunch, anyway, yeah. that was a little off-putting. It was off-putting. Were you, did you, did well, I like that period, and I like the fashion. That was kind of cool. Well, yes. So do I. Talk about That's this what show I have that to you say. Yes. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I do. I like the, the interior design, everything. I love the, the beautiful bar carts, the mm -hmm. vintage carts. I have one like that. I like the costume design there in terms of the clothes of the period, like kind of the golden. I thought it was uh, that was very nice and interesting to me. But other than that, I didn't have time to slot it in did, to become addicted to it. Did you like what a hottie John Hamm is? Cause that's yeah, I think he's quite attractive in real life as well. Yes. So yes. my homework was to watch the finale. Yeah. Sean came up. And you've never like, seen this show. And I've never seen a minute of this show. So <laughs> you I took watched, it seriously? And I, I, I started homework? to, I'm like, I'm not. And I f fast forward to the very end of the yeah. part that you were talking about. I got to tell you, great finale. Way, yeah. um, amazing way to finish a series. Much better than the finale at Sopranos, I thought. So, like, <gasps> so many questions. Bite your there. tongue. No, no, I'm a huge brilliant. Uh, no, no, listen. Brilliant. Don't get me wrong. Love the series. Also love Seinfeld and didn't like either one of those finales. They're that always, one, I don't know. The best finale, finale of late, though, was Justified. That I, was a good one. Yeah, that was year. a good one. 
I was. Well, you like it? But you have to really like it. No, I'm saying sometimes it's such a letdown, especially when you're so committed to a series and watching it that they just they never do it as well as you you would like them to. I think, except you like Justified. Pretty good. I mean, the the, the, the way did I read this right? Yeah. At the end, at the very end, Don Draper it it develops a Coke commercial. Yeah. That would end up being the Coke. Yeah. So what you what you think is that he's becoming Mm. uh, almost like a piece, a new agey Esalon Institute follower, but he's just actually using it. To create. to create a, a, How a, mad a, must the person who really came up with that commercial be today? <laughs> exactly, because it's not true. But it's still a great story. All great stories are false.